Good. I, I can see some of you, and if I flip screens, I see the rest. So I think uh, I think it's time to get started here. So I'm going to call the regular board meeting to order at this time. And Carol, I'd like to ask you to open us in prayer, if you would. Okay, please join me. We thank you for the blessings of this day, for the harvest time and the beautiful colors of nature. We pray for the elections next week, and we pray, Lord, for our nation that freedom may reign. Be with our employees and others as they work the elections, and we pray for honesty and integrity. Bless this meeting and give us wisdom for the decisions that we make. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. And let's ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Mr. Clerk, I only detect one, two, three, four, five of us. I do not see John or Jason. Okay. Uh, this is Jason. I'm here. Okay. Jason's on. All right. I don't see John. Say, Dan, I suspect John might be reaching out to you if he was having technical trouble. Have you heard anything from him? I have not. So okay. um, maybe we'll have we'll check and see if we can find him. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Everyone, yeah. Mr. Chairman, um, apparently is on the Zoom meeting with the exception of John Schwamm at this time. Okay. Well, hopefully Dan maybe is reaching out to him while we uh, begin things here. I just want to thank you again for your flexibility in going back to Zoom this time. If you've seen, and I think you probably all have seen, the, the boardroom right now is just filled with election-related equipment and absentee ballots and so on. So there was really no, no way we could do it in there. And, and quite honestly, um, I'm grateful because I'm sitting here out in, in uh, Washington, D.C., where we're moving my uh, son and his family from one coast to the other and so uh, I'm able to join you and I appreciate that uh, all right here at the outset you've all received your copy of the agenda is there a motion to approve our agenda this evening mr. chairman I'll make the motion to approve the agenda as uh, presented apart okay, moved and supported any discussion about tonight's agenda Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, our agenda is approved. Item number seven, uh, communication letters and reports received for information. Item eight, public comments about items remaining on the agenda. Uh, Dan, do you recognize anyone from the public from having joined us tonight? Uh, there are two people from the public. Um, they give a chance if they want to speak, they need to raise their hand. All right. I don't see anyone, either of the two, raising their hand. All right. Any word from John as yet? Uh, Rod is track, trying to track him down. Okay. All right. He is well, having, it's, it's, uh, hmm? John is having technical difficulties and working to um, alleviate those. Okay. I tell you what, I, I think it would be important to him, and I think to all of us, uh, to have him with us. I wonder if it would be all right, uh, I might make a, a motion to, can we amend the agenda once approved to perhaps move any items of discussion and general information to now, if people just simply wanted to talk about uh, general items, if there are any, that'd be appropriate? It might be a few minutes. Might be a few minutes, okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that we amend our agenda uh, to move the item of discussion and general information to this point right here 
uh, call it 8.5 of the agenda. Uh, is there a second for that motion? I'll support that. All right, and it may well be, and in, in, by the way, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, I was gonna say it, it, it carries. It may be that there, there isn't anything in particular uh, that people have in mind, but this is an opportunity while we wait for John to, to bring up any general points of discussion. Does any board member wish to uh, address any particular item here for the board? I know one oh. I have in mind, which might just be uh, an update on the tally of absentee votes received and perhaps uh, a reminder to those who may view this meeting online uh, and perhaps haven't seen it on our website, but in terms of how they could verify their ballots been received and how ready we are for the election next Tuesday. Mr. Clerk, would you mind addressing those things for us? Uh, no problem, be happy to do that. We are receiving um, an inordinate amount of absentee ballots given the COVID situation. Uh, I would say that I, I did not get the final count for today, but I would say that the number of ballots uh, that we have um, re have returned to us is well over 10,000 now. And the number of those that were um, sent out is well over 18,000. And so mm -hmm. we, have, um, we have a good percentage and there are those that are coming in every day, not only um, to register to vote, but to make application to get an absentee ballot. And mm -hmm. we, have, um, we have some excellent folks working uh, in the, our boardroom currently. Uh, there, Nancy and Barb both are working there. When folks come in, if they need to apply for an absentee ballot, or uh, if they're bringing in their absentee ballot, they uh, we have the drop box in the lobby and uh, many people are uh, using that. And so we're very, uh, very busy and we're very thankful for the workers that we have who are well qualified uh, to fulfill those duties. So we're grateful for that. So Rich, realistically on Tuesday evening next week, um, tell us how, how quickly that we're able to deliver our results to the county. Just give us an idea of the, the time frame. Well, I don't think anyone really knows the answer to that question. Uh, first of all, we have 17 precincts and it all depends, Those the polls close at eight o'clock. Uh, once they are finished and the precinct, those, uh, results are automatically sent uh, to the county um, over a secured line. And so they get those results. However, that does not include any of the results from the absentee ballots. Even though absentee ballots will be counted during the day, um, I, I, I can't predict at all how long it's going to take for them to finish up. Um, downstairs and um, it could be sooner than what any of us anticipate. I think, I don't think it's going to be as long a process for us as some predict for other municipalities. Um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful, uh, but in terms of knowing uh, when we'll get those results, um, as I said, from the, pre, uh, from the precincts, once uh, all of those tabulators and the e-poll book, once those are all verified and closed down, those, those results are automatically sent to the county. I see. And for those working with the AV ballots, as you mentioned, down in the basement, um, they stay until it's done. In other words, if... Uh, if they need to stay late into the night or early in the morning and so on, they stay at it until it's finished, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Rich, they are, give us a night. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, they are sequestered. Uh, once they are downstairs in the AV counting board, they are sequestered. And anyone um, who's there, obviously, um, 
has to stay until they complete their work, as you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Explain to me uh, or explain to us in terms of those who might poll watch and their access to a room like that. Just out of curiosity, I was a poll watcher many years ago. Um, and if there were those who came to, to be a poll watcher, are they then allowed to say, sit in that room and observe what happens? Is that how it works, Rich? They would, they would also then be sequestered. They'd have to realize that if they would come in, let's say they'd come in in the morning um, at 7 a.m. and want to um, be a poll watcher, um, they would be required to be sequestered if they went to, downstairs to the AV counting board. And then there's a public space. Poll watchers um, at the precincts can also um, be there, but they have to be in a in the public space. They cannot be in um, any of the areas uh, where, for instance, the voting booths or where um, the poll workers, precinct workers, are um, conducting business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does the number of AV ballots requested this year compared to, say, four years ago, Rich? Just just so we can kind of gauge just how much more there is under 2020 rules. I believe um, I'm, I would be correct in saying it's um, probably more than double. Okay. And if you had to, to guess from your years of experience in terms of the percentage of the electorate that will turn out in Georgetown Township, just take a, just take a guess. What, what percentage do you think will, will vote, be they in person or absentee? Well, given uh, the percentage of folks that are voting current or have already voted, um, my guess would be we'll be up in the 30 plus percent, maybe even more than that, of total registered voters. We have approximately um, 38,000 voters, so it could even be higher than that, 38,000 registered voters, approximately. So you weren't just giving a percentage of those who'd vote absentee, but you're saying overall, out of all of those uh, registered voters, you yeah, think we might all? Well, mm -hmm. it's hard to say. Um, mm -hmm. I think because there's such a high interest, but I, mm -hmm. I would say um, we may get, it might be much higher than that too, I think, because mm -hmm. of the interest in this particular mm -hmm. election. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. I, I'll just comment from my own viewpoint, kind of sad. <laughs> I, you, you would think the, the percentage for something this monumentous, monumental would be 80 plus percent, maybe 90 plus percent. But I think it's obviously unrealistic. Dan, what's the highest percentage you've ever seen? I, in I think I'm years? predicting our percentage to be over 80 percent and closer to 90. Oh, you just do? My okay. Prediction. okay. Have you ever seen it that high if you're accurate in that prediction? Have you ever seen I believe four years ago we were approaching 80 percent. Okay. All right. Is John with us yet? No. He's not, okay. I think well, I, hmm? you might need to move forward. Yeah, we might. Are there any other uh, items at this time? We can also have a brief time again at the end, but anyone wish to raise anything for the board just generally in terms of discussion? Otherwise, we'll move on with our agenda. All right, hearing no one. Item number nine, consent agenda. There's a number of items under that consent agenda. Uh, do any of the board members wish to remove any of those items? Should we first put it before you by way of a motion? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make I'll the motion, that. Mr. Chairman, to approve the consent agenda as presented. All right. Support. I think I heard support from Carol. Okay. Um, anyone wish to remove any of the items from the consent agenda? All right. Hearing none. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, and the motion is carried. Item 10, property acquisition. Uh, the board will recall that, oh boy, it's been probably, it was two meetings ago, certainly. It's about a month ago, we went into closed session and had discussion about possible property acquisition. And here we've got tonight before you is item number 10 on the agenda, a proposed uh, purchase agreement for approximately 32 acres next to Maplewood Park to expand that park. Is there a motion to uh, approve 
of this purchase and place it before the board for discussion and vote at this time? I don't know that. It's been moved. Anyone support? I'll support it. All right, and it's supported. So the uh, purchase agreement each of you have received, and I trust I'm sure have reviewed, um, and I know that we discussed in that closed session the, uh, the property itself. So uh, let's just bring it before you now. Anyone wish to address uh, the motion before you in this agreement in particular, either pro or con? I, I guess I got a question. Uh, do we know, well, it's the 32 acres are, <clears throat> excuse me, muck. Do, do we know what, what is the goal for the property? And if we remove the muck, how much would that be roughly to make it buildable, usable? A portion is the high ground where all the uh, barns are and buildings are. That is still high ground. I don't know the acreage split between the two. And, uh, you know, I don't think we've ever discussed a plan for the property. Um, sim simply as a expansion in the area. That's really it's all of it's been discussed as far as that and purifying Maplewood Lake and access to it. So. I think it's a fair uh, inquiry too, obviously. I think each one of us maybe should express, if you wish, your opinion or perspective. I, for my own part, um, I guess it's, it's probably twofold. I know Dan just mentioned about the potential for, you know, cleaning the area, cleaning the lake, et cetera. My, what was on my mind uh, is really probably threefold. One, uh, possible usage just in terms of eventually, uh, I don't think anything elaborate, maybe a dirt path, a, a greater walking trail ability back through there. The second being um, having to drive access, uh, which we don't currently have to property that we currently own. And the third, and maybe the most important for me, and again, this is one person's perspective, but we have talked at, at times about the, um, the green belt, if you will, that runs through the middle of, of uh, Georgetown uh, and encompasses this area and could run all the way potentially to Fillmore, perhaps all the way to eventually to Rosewood, I'm not sure. But, but the reality is, is that we have a diminishing uh, green space. And I think it would be left, obviously, to future boards, whether they choose to include that a master plan and truly build on it, much like the county has done for years and years along the Grand River. Um, it takes a vision, it takes a long-term perspective. Um, to me, it's got an immediate adjacent assistance to the, to the park, but I think long-term, it's one piece in a much larger puzzle that we'll see if uh, a future board, maybe the next one or the one after, might choose to pick up and extend in either direction. Uh, and I think to the betterment of our public uh, who desires open space and places to walk and, and you know all the rest of that. So that's one person's perspective, others of you. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to note that Mr. Schwamm has, uh, has worked out his difficulties. He's now with us. Great. Hi, John. Hi, John. How are you? Hey, John. Yep. There we go. Okay. Hear? Great. Great. Hey, yes. glad, glad you're able to join us. We're on item number 10 on the agenda right now. We're on the purchase agreement regarding the 32 acres by Maplewood Park. And uh, right now we're just talking about as Michael just asked, you know, what is the purpose? And so I stated one thought I had, Dan had uh, a thought. Uh, do others of you have a perspective on whether or not you see this as something important to the township? As you said, Jim, I think that green belt, you know, saving some green space is really important with all the building that's going on. Um, you know, it's important that we have the parks area and the walking trails and eventually connecting, like you said, um, to the river. Um, it It's just, makes sense. I think it's fair to point out, Carol, when you mention that, and, and we all are cognizant of the fact that we, we're we grateful. I mean, we're a, we're a magnet for growth and, and building, and we've got wonderful builders and wonderful neighborhoods going up. And this isn't an area that I think any of us expects will turn into a neighborhood anytime soon, if ever. I think it's more the fact that that building on these piece by piece will eventually cover ground that very well and, and most certainly will be eventually developed on. And so, it's just a piece in that puzzle from my view. Anyone else? Well, Jim, if I can add, um, Maplewood has become incredibly popular. Uh, they love the splash pad. The walkway around the, the lake was very controversial and people love it and they compliment all the time. Connecting it all the way up to Baldwin has been just awesome. 
And to be able to extend trails back there into the fields, I think it's an incredible plus. We already have parking there and you already have bathrooms. So all of that, I think a future board will be very happy we've done this. I think it's also very positive for the community. I'm for it. Okay, Rich, Jason, Michael, others of you. Becky. I'm in support of it for the same reasons that have been said. I think that um, the ability to access um, property that we already own and preserving our green space are both important for the future of the township. And, um, and I don't think that it's our place as a board right now to necessarily um, kind of in the 11th hour of our tenure together to have a specific plan for it. But I think that it is responsible to, um, to obtain the property, you know, while it's available um, and then trust the next chapter that follows this board um, to decide, you know, if they want to do something with it or if they want, um, you know, to pass it along to the future. But I think that um, just wrapping it in with the property that we already have down there is, is responsible and, and could be very good for the water quality at Maplewood. Very good, very good. You don't all have to speak to it, but you certainly have this occasion. Others of you, anyone else? I would just say that um, I, I like the idea um, possibly of park expansions. My issue is one that property, I believe it was on the market for at least a year. Um, so it wasn't going anywhere quick. Um, but I'd be more interested in um, looking at property. In fact, there's some on 36 in the Northwest in between uh, Bauer and Fillmore. Um, going from memory, I want to say it was around 400,000 acreage. I want to say 20, 20 acres or so. Um, but I know we've got a lot of parks loaded up in, um, you know, that Maplewood area. We've got Maplewood, which connects to Woodcrest. Um, and then we have Pioneer right next to Woodcrest. We got Rosewood Park right over there. Um, but we really don't have anything up in the Northwest quadrant. So um, if, if I was interested in property, that would be the place I'd look. Um, mm. Mm. Not necessarily. And the other concerns, like I mentioned before, is what percentage of it is muck? How deep is muck? I heard like 10 foot to 15 foot of muck. And if you want to use it for something other than farming, it's a considerable am amount of money. And that's why no developers have bought it to turn it into housing. Uh, so I'm just afraid we're kind of get painted ourselves into a corner buying property that what if we don't know what we're going to use it for um, to be stuck with well if we want to make it usable for something we're going to have to pull out the muck and bring in fill which is going to cost a fortune so uh, there's just too many unknowns for me at this point unless we did like a community garden or something which you know could be kind of a cool thing but um, I just lean towards invest if we're going to invest invest in a park that's going to be up in that the northwest quadrant michael you make a good point i and i think for the future services committee of the next board uh, i think we're coming up on a five-year park plan it's about that time uh and that certainly is something that you're right i hear that from time to time on the public look we really focused on certain areas and we need to begin to realize that that growth is expanding that direction to the west and uh, it would be a very good thing to look at uh, the type of thing you're talking about. So I hope that doesn't fall off the radar. Um, anyone else? Well, Jim, I, I would just like to say that I agree with what you said earlier. And so I'm in favor of uh, this purchase. I also agree with uh, what you just said in response to what Michael said about the Northwest Quadrant. I do believe that uh, that would be a viable consideration uh, for the services committee moving forward. And I think that would be uh, something very um, good for them to have, for the services committee to have on their agenda as they move forward, as they plan for um, expansion of park services uh, in Georgetown Township. So I concur uh, with what uh, was stated there, but I'm, I'm in favor of and support uh, this motion for property acquisition as presented. All right, anyone else? 
Yeah, access is a is just a good point that now the current owner has allowed us uh, access back to some of the areas that we wouldn't otherwise be able to get to. Um, if, the, if the property sold to somebody else, we're not guaranteed that right. And uh, somebody else had mentioned that, well, maybe we could just build a bridge on the other side to connect it the, to the land that we do own. But, you know, I can tell you that bridge is probably going to cost more than the $350,000. So with this, we get an extra 32 acres as well, and we could keep our keep access to an area we need to get access to. Mm-hmm. All right. Each of you have had a chance to speak. Uh, at this time, uh, we're ready for a vote. And I know it doesn't require a voice vote uh, one by one here, but I think let's do a roll call only because we're on Zoom and it's it's an important decision. And I, I think, Mr. Chairman, it it would be appropriate to do a roll call, seeing that we're um, virtually meeting. I think in the past that's been uh, yeah. something that we required. And I think that is okay. um, is good. Um, so right. I will, I will call the roll, um, Mrs. Steele. Yes. Mr. Bosch. No. Mrs. Skolma. Yes. Uh, clerk votes yes. Mr. Schwamm. Yes. Mr. Manier. Yes. And Mr. Weiringa. Yes. That is carried. All right. Thank you, each of you, for your thoughts on that. Uh, item number 11, the Budget Stabilization Fund. Is there a motion uh, that someone would like to put before the board with regard to the Budget Stabilization Fund? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to transfer one, transfer $1 million from the Township General Fund to the Budget Stabilization Fund as recommended by the Finance Committee. I'll support that. All right, moved and supported. Discussion among the board, and if anyone wishes to ask you know, Dan for input in terms of history, we're welcome to do that as well. So, well, I'd like to thank Dan for doing such an excellent job on the library. It's uh, beautiful. All I hear is compliments about it. And we came in $800,000 under budget. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful setting, beautiful building. So thank you for budgeting things so well. Thank you. And I, and I think your point in that, John, being that because uh, things went well with such a large project, we, uh, we had the ability to consider the motion that's before us right now in terms of uh, monies available to reestablish, if you will, that stabilization fund. Other, other thoughts about that? Anyone? Mr. Chairman, I would just like to uh, point out the fact, and perhaps um, our superintendent can speak to this, um, in his communique with us, he indicated that uh, the only real difference here is that it requires a two-thirds majority to add or remove money from this fund. And so I think um, that's, some, that's good that we're, we've been made aware of that. I was not aware of that until I read um, you know, the superintendent's comment. And so I think um, I think that's important to be aware of. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, others. All right. So I, I guess my only comment would be, I wanna make sure that it's understood to the degree that the public is either observing now or will observe this meeting. It's not as though the township has been uh, you know, on tenuous ground here for the past months, and they're just now reestablishing a firm foundation. We've remained on a firm foundation financially throughout. I think we stopped using the nomenclature of budget stabilization fund for a period of time, but I, I think it appropriate. I'm, I'm grateful that we're, we're establishing that because I think that, that generally speaking, the public, uh, you know, would expect that this be maintained, and, and uh, so I'm, I'm supportive of it. Um, and let's share Yes. Mm -hmm. I would just like to um, ask if um, our superintendent would just speak to that because um, the comments that you made in terms of the funds that are available, um, I think that would be good to get that on the record if, he, if he's willing to do that. Well, I, I mean, if you talk about a point in time, we started the year with 9 million in our fund balance. And 
you know, throughout the year, we've now lowered taxes now, so that'll be a factor and bought some land. So I, I don't have a good target pro rat, but we're certainly going to be over 7 million. And I, I'm sorry, I'm not more prepared at this point. No, so I'm not quite sure how the year will progress, but certainly comfortable that we can uh, move money into the stabilization fund. As I mentioned in the communique, the money's there. It isn't going anywhere. It's just changing which fund balance line it's in. And that's really all it's doing. And so uh, it's fine to do it. And then if there is some type of need in the future, you can always, you know, if five board members are comfortable with that need, it can be moved back. Sure, thank you. I, um, I was just asking in terms of getting it on the record that there's approximately um, 7 million in the general fund balance. I think it's good um, that we have that information available. And I think you mentioned Dan too, didn't you, that to take it out takes a two thirds vote also? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before we uh, call the roll here? All right, yeah, I think none. it's fantastic okay. that we are in compliance with Michigan compiled law. Fantastic. All right, we might get a unanimous one here. Let's find out. Say, Rich, would you but call have, the roll, please? I do have a question, oh. though, since Jim yeah. brought up the library. Uh, we issued a 179D uh, to Lakewood Construction for 11.889 million. <clears throat> so my I'd question like is, do if we need I may, to reissue that? Is it, we're, we're in the middle of a discussion about budget stabilization. I think we should cover that. I don't, I don't care if we cover it now. That's what I wonder is it could, it could be in discussion later, um, but John went down into the weeds about the library part what, of it, so. Mr. We, we Chairman. Will go back to, if, we, if you would, wouldn't mind waiting on just a minute, Mike, yeah, we will go back to the discussion works. at the end. We will, we will. Sounds good. All right, so uh, Rich, would you call the roll on item 11? Yes, Mrs. Steele. Yes. Mr. Bosch. Yes. Mrs. Skolma. Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Schwamm. Yes. Mr. Manier. Yes. And Mr. Weiringa. Yes. That's passed. All right. Great, item 12, sidewalk and Cottonwood from Bower Road to Taylor Street. Would someone like to uh, place a motion before the board concerning that item? I will, on behalf of Utilities Committee, make the motion to authorize township staff to notify property owners of the upcoming construction on Cottonwood and to explain the option of the property owners filing a petition to have sidewalks in, mm -hmm. added to the project. Um, there's some other details in our agenda, about 51% of property owners um, signing the petition is what would continue to move the process forward with the township's involvement as far as coordinating, financing, um, and covering a portion of the installation costs. The part. I, I would say, I, okay, well, I would support that if we tack onto that, Becky, that should this not be approved, that as part of the project, because we are under somewhat of a time frame, that we would do a paved shoulder like we did on 48. And make that a, maybe if that would be part of your motion. And uh, John has already supported it, but I, I would support that as well. I'm very comfortable adding that to my motion as long as that doesn't put me out of order with regard to Robert's rules in making my motion. Um, I'm very comfortable adding to my motion that um, if less than 51% of property owners um, sign the petition, then uh, extended paved shoulder um, would be added instead and at the township's cost. I'll re-support. <laughs> so that would, uh that would change it from a three foot to a six foot, as I understand it, uh, shoulder if that occurs. Is that right, Dan? I haven't seen the finished plans, but that is normally what they do is they do a three and then we add three. So okay. I don't know where their plans are right now. So, but yes. All right. I, for one, would like to hear from someone on utilities, just uh, some of the thoughts uh, behind this project and this particular motion, if you wouldn't mind. Well, Jim, we felt that this would give the property owners an option. If they wanted to go with a sidewalk, they could, but they would have to get the votes or the, the support for it. And that there would also be some uh, support from the township itself. If that didn't happen, at least we would have a six foot shoulder on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. One of the things that we talked about at utilities is that there are already some good paths over in the area. And so it was hard for us to judge um, to what extent the people living in that area um, might want to take advantage of this, which is, um, which is part of the reason that I um, was advocating for doing a petition. Um, because I don't want to force it on anybody um, if they're already feeling plenty covered in that area. Um, but I do think that safe pedestrian paths is important. Um, we also came to covering 25% of the installation costs because we are trying to be consistent with other projects um, of a similar nature that the township has done. And this road falls onto part of a plan that we have, the kind of the, the, the master sidewalk plan of all the areas that we determine that we'd like to see sidewalks being mostly major thoroughfares, areas to parks, areas to schools. Uh, so with this being a major road, this kind of falls on one of our long-term plans to see sidewalks, but uh, it is still kind of a, it, it's, it's a not, you know, an area that might be developed more down the road. So, um, it, that's that's why this this one is is up there. I see. Did the utilities committee you've each spoken now to this? Did you consider at all? Or did you discuss the prospect of um, sort of the other end of the spectrum? That is, you consider the end of of saying, look, we don't really want to require it and force people to pay for it. Um, did you consider the other end of the spectrum? And and if so, what were the thoughts about the township installing sidewalk there? Um, given that it is what I would, I think we'd all call a primary road, um, akin to, you know, Baldwin and some of the other uh, primary roads. Did you consider whether or not we would want to simply install them as part of the project? We had that conversation. Um, we were talking about like how this project parallels other things that we've done. Um, and so we were leaning more in the direction of, is it 8th Avenue, um, the other project, um, than the other one we were comparing it to is what we did on 28th Avenue. Um, but on 28th, where we installed it, there was a trade um, for right of way made with the property owners. And we didn't, um, so we didn't want to just install it with no give and take you know from the property owners since we had that on 28th Ave. Um, I don't know if that answers your question Jim or if it totally represents our whole conversation John and Jason it's been a little bit but um, but we were trying to look at other projects that we've done and and be similar or consistent with choices we've made on similar roadways. Mm -hmm. well, what makes it hard Jim is that historically even going back previous boards they're, they're, ha they're there's been some, some, some minor inconsistencies, but there have been a lot of people that have been forced to pay for these sidewalks. And so to, to make that switch, some people have made the argument saying, well, the township should just be paying for all of them. And, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. Uh, I'm just saying that there are a number of people that, that didn't have that luxury, that people that had to pay for their own. And so uh, what we've uh, kind of tried to do is get creative and find ways to, to help offset, to, to do financing, and, and we pick up a portion of it. To try and make it so that uh, we're, we're not going back to these these homeowners like has happened in the past to say you must pay for this and put it in you don't have a choice um here, here are some choices and you know the the idea of putting in the sidewalks like i said that that might be you know th this came up now because of the the construction project that's going to happen on the road but maybe you know and the next time construction happens there down the road uh, no pun intended that you know, maybe there will be more traffic in that area and maybe things might get developed a little bit more further as you go out uh, Cottonwood down around to Fillmore. Uh, maybe there'll be more of a need for it later uh, than there is right now. But because we have this project, we thought here's an opportunity for the, for the homeowners to get some, somewhat of a discount and get some assistance from the township and, and let's get it done now. Sure, sure. Come on, well, 8th I Avenue, we paid 25%. And that seemed to be quite fair. That was our reasoning with the 25%. I think if we've been consistent about one thing over the years, and I've been 12 years on the board now when it comes to sidewalks, is we're consistent in our inconsistency. <laughs> that is, we have done a variety of things. And uh, I do think uh, a uniform policy may well emerge here, need to emerge here in the very near future. But um, 
I can think of and point to examples where we didn't require anything of uh, any of the adjacent owners along what I would call primary roads. And, uh, and, and if it weren't for the window of time here, I would say, well, it's just something to, to think about and talk about with the next board. But I want to I want at least throw out, out there tonight, and I may be the only one, but um, I'd want to see, you've got a school on one side, and you've got a lot of neighborhood on the other up until Taylor, which is where this essentially would end. Um, it would join a lot of neighbors to the path that exists that then takes you down to the trail that runs along the river and also would join you up with a school. I don't think as uh, we've had historically, I don't think we're going to get a petition. I think we're going to put one out. I, I, I have my doubts about whether or not we'll find a majority who support it. And that's their prerogative. I, I get that. No one's, uh, no one's saying differently, but um, well, I, I'm open to saying, you know what, um, henceforth, uh, including something like this, uh, we, we want to be more and more walkable and especially along primary roads. And that's where we've tended when we have gone the direction of paying for it. We've done so on primary roads. Uh, and I would not be adverse to the township installing these sidewalks uh, on either side. It wouldn't have to be in the form of an asphalt path either because I think it'd be inconsistent with what's there presently. It could be a concrete path, a sidewalk is what we think of traditionally. But that's just, again, that's just one perspective. And I'm sure that would cost a number of, yeah, probably half a million dollars. I don't know, 500,000 or maybe high, but I'm just saying, I, I realize in saying that, that that's not cheap. And I think that's, that's the kind of thing that our residents um, on primary roads in particular, and I'm sure many of them would wish on their, their secondary streets were the case. But anyway, any other uh, perspectives, any, you know, pro, con, different than anything that's been said tonight? I guess my question would be um, if the uh, residents on Cottonwood were able to get 51% uh, for the petition, what would the cost of, what, what, what are we talking numbers wise for 25% of sidewalk? And if they can't get it, what would the cost of that six foot shoulder be? We, since we don't know exactly what the board's going to do, we have to work, this is a road commission product, so we, we don't have good estimates yet. We haven't processed with good estimates. It would be the actual construction cost based on the bid. So um, until we get some designs out there, we, we're, it's too early to get estimates. And unless we know what we're going to build, we won't get accurate ones. And so until you kind of go here, it's hard for us to know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if very rough that you're looking at you know 150 to 100 to thousand for the shoulders and maybe you know 200,000 for a portion of the sidewalks but it's very rough and uh, not something to hold to it but yes it would be the sidewalks would be quite a bit more when you say 200,000 and you're referring to the 25 percent that we would contribute as a township yes roughly okay. it's just very rough yeah right I get it yeah what, what was the cost of uh, Port Sheldon as a pretty short section with a six foot shoulder? I don't have that number on the top of my head. Sorry. I thought I remember the, the boardwalk and Phil being like million plus. Yeah, that was expensive. Yeah, it was like, I want to say the so. six foot shoulder was 400. 400 for the six foot shoulder and 1.4 for the um, there you go. sidewalk. So. And in just rough comparison, distance-wise, Cottonwood, how much of that would be about the same length, longer? This is all what you get to determine if you want to go to Taylor. It's all what you have to determine. That's why, so we don't know where, you know, the other was a full mile. So, so we could be looking at four times <coughs> that length. Depending on how far you went, but I was, you don't right. have to go the whole length. Uh, the subdivisions is probably where you'd want to stop, but you can go as far as you like. When do they intend to start this project, Dan? Next spring, you know, with whatever that means. They want to design this winter, and so that's why we, if we're going to add sidewalks to it with hearings, we have to get moving. Hearings take a couple months, so. Mr. Chairman. If you don't decide today, you will not have a hearing on a sidewalk for that project. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I 
am in support of the recommendation from the utilities committee. Um, and um, on, I would like to, um, unless there's some other discussion, move to a vote. I'm just asking, I'm not. Sure. At, sure, sure. Well, does anyone else wish to address this? Uh, I think most of you have. All right. Hearing none, uh, Mr. Clerk, you can call the roll. Mr. Schwamm? Yes. Mrs. Steele? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mr. Weeringa? Yes. Mrs. Skolma? Yes. Mr. Muneer? Yes. Mr. Bosch? No. Carried. All right. Thank you uh, for bringing that to us and the thoughtful discussion. Item number 13, letter of support. Uh, let me preface this one before there's any motion made. As you saw, there was a short letter of support related to the Ottawa uh, Water Conservation District. Um, I've been in communication, they've been in communication with me uh, off and on here in recent months. And they're, they're seeking grants to preserve um, what is uh, viewed as a diminishing uh, freshwater supply, which seems kind of strange being so close to the lake when we're losing all our beaches. I'm no scientist that way, and no groundwater expert, but apparently um, as agricultural land is, is diminishing, right, and more and more neighborhoods are being built, uh, there are concerns about uh, the water supply, the freshwater supply beneath the ground, and, uh, and keeping it clean and so on. And so they've asked at various times, you know, would the various townships in the area and the city support them? Would they place people on committees with them or ad hoc committees or uh, support them financially and otherwise? And really all I've said and all I'm bringing to you tonight to consider, uh, it's no skin off my nose one way or the other, but I thought the mission of the district is uh, hard to argue with. Um, and I pared it down to simply a request of whether or not this board would like to authorize me to write on behalf of this board that we're supportive of their efforts so that they're able to report in, in their grant applications um, in terms of the numbers of a percentage of townships and cities uh, that support their application. I haven't committed nor would I be able to nor would I even sense that right now there's any desire to, to pay money to them or to appoint one of us uh, to to serve on a committee of theirs. Uh, the question is simply tonight, is there a consensus of the board to have me execute a, a letter as a supervisor on behalf of the board saying, look, we support what you're doing and, and your attempts to get, uh, to get money um, to help with some of your projects. So with that uh, preface in mind, uh, I'll move to place this a letter of support before the board. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Any thoughts or discussion? Well, I went to a meeting. Mm -hmm. I went to a meeting on this one time, and I think it had to do with the wells um, in the counties towards the lake are running dry, and I think that's why they want to get this grant. Um, they're really having a problem issue with that, and so mm -hmm. I, I would be in support of that as long as it's not involving any money at this point, mm -hmm. and then for future boards to decide you know, in the future, if they have something that they want to decide that then. But if we're just supporting for getting, helping them get a grant, I think that's great. Anyone else have any feelings about this one way or the other? Jim, I would just um, like to ask a question about the uh, letter that you put together for us, which I appreciate. Um, did you receive the information in the letter from the Ottawa Conservation District? I mean, is that standard boilerplate? Yeah, they, they wrote the letter, Rich. They wrote the letter. I cut parts of it out because it made assumptions about uh, serving on committees and, and perhaps donating money and the like. And there's, in fact, another revision I would make to it, quite honestly, it mentions about partnering with them there at the end. And to me, partnership implies, again, uh, obligations uh, beyond mere support. And so uh, I expect to edit that one uh, thing out. But uh, to your point, yeah, they drafted it, and I simply paired it back. Okay. I, and the reason I asked that is because when I read it, 
I don't disagree with the first sentence in the letter. I think um, I agree with that. And then I started to read about the Ottawa County has a rich legacy of agriculture and so forth, which is true. And then they had all of the references to um, various um, groups. And I did look those groups up and maybe the rest of the board members did as well. Um, and I, obviously, um, those groups are uh, programs that maintain properties as farms. And I think you alluded to the fact that to preserve farmland um, in order to um, enhance or maintain uh, the level of water quality. Um, and that's one of, obviously one of the things that they're getting at. Um, and so I, I, I have no strong feelings one way or the other either. And if this is going to help to facilitate a grant, um, as long as it does not, um, it, we're not committing ourselves to helping to fund anything here is the, um, and just another quick question, the Ottawa Conservation District, that's a separate entity from um, Ottawa County. This is a uh, public, or is it a private group? I, I, I think it's, it, is it, it's not underwritten by Ottawa County, the county itself, is it? I don't think. My understanding is they have appointed to the district uh, at least one or more employees of the county. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dan, do you have a, a different understanding about that? Quickly looking right now as you're speaking. Because when I call, I speak to somebody at the county, but go ahead. It basically says it's controlled by Ottawa County. Okay. That's who appoints their members. Okay, good, thank you. That's what the website says. I'm just grabbing that little part. Sure, thank you. Anyone else with any thoughts about this? I'm, I'm not trying to push this hard one way or the other. I just wanna know if anybody has uh, any strong feelings against uh, I'm not against this, Jim, but my only feeling is I, I'm just ever mindful of the fact that we're in the 11th hour of our board's time together. Um, and so my, my question would be, when you sign this letter, are you going to sign it like um, Becky Steele trustee, Michael Bosch trustee, or are you going to sign it the Georgetown Township Board? Um, because I think that if you want to sign it from the Georgetown Township Board, my recommendation might be that we revisit this in a month or two um, and just make sure that if it's a document that's going to live for the next four years, that it's the board of the next four years that um, that has stood behind the letter of support. Or if you want to sign it with our names, then I'm really comfortable with continuing to have that conversation now. So the way in which they expect it'll be signed would be by me only as supervisor and, and representing the board has had a discussion about it. And honestly, I think they're a little disappointed in us. Um, so be it. Uh, I mean, I think when you have the largest township of, in your county, uh, not contributing, not, uh, you know, assigning someone to a committee. But the reality is, is we're, we're far from the center of the, the problem or the issues. And most of us are, are on public uh, water. It's not as near and dear, I think, as those closer to the lakeshore. Uh, we're not, I guess my perspective again with them is we're not opposed and we're not not supportive. We're just, uh, we're going to be lightly supportive in terms of, of, you know, maybe helping buttress their, their argument by a simple, you know, letter of support. So um, I, I'd be the only signature um, the way I understand it, Becky. I'm comfortable with it either way. Um, I just... I just want to continue to be mindful that we aren't making decisions or, or speaking for a board that hasn't been seated yet. Yeah, I mean, you're right to be sensitive to that. I appreciate that. Um, so. My only question would be then, is it a grant and is there like a deadline? Is that why they gave us the letter now? 
You know what? It is a grant application, but I don't believe there's an urgent deadline, Carol. Okay. So I can be either way too, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, clarify one other thing too. When I read yeah. their website, it's a little bit unclear, but it basically was formed by the state. It talks about and, you know, works, you know, for landowners out of county. So I am not 100% who's appointing their board members. So I want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I know they have at least one out of county person on the board, but. Well, I said to myself tonight, I mean, it's not a big enough deal that if, if people are opposed at all, I would simply withdraw it. I'm sensing people saying, oh, I'm kind of non plus. I have no, I have no real issue with it. Um, there is a motion before you. Uh, anyone else wish to speak to it? If not, we'll take a vote on the motion. Hearing none. Uh, I guess we'll go back to roll call. It seems right here being on, on Zoom. So Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bosch? Yes. Mr. Manier? Jason? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Skolma? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Weringa? Yes. Clerk votes yes. Mrs. Steele? Yes. And Mr. Schwamm? Yes. Thank you. Uh, item number 14, second public comment period. So I look to you, Dan, to see whether anyone's raising their hand in the public. Uh, I do have one person raising their hand, uh, Sandy. And go ahead, and Sandy, go ahead. Good. Thank you very much. I just wanted to address the uh, discussion on the sidewalk on Cottonwood. Um, as someone who walks uh, every day and I walk down 24th where there is not a sidewalk and it's 45 miles an hour, um, we've got more distracted drivers than ever before um, with cell phones and whatnot. So anything that we can do to support the walkability of our neighborhoods uh, where there are homes, um, I think it's a, a good thing to do. Personally, I know uh, both someone who's been severely injured by a distracted driver as well as someone who's lost their life. So I would strongly support anything we can do to help the sidewalks in those neighborhoods, even if it's putting a sidewalk just on one side and not both. Um, <laughs> that was all. Thank you, Sandy. Dan, anyone else? <laughs> That's it. That's it, okay. All right, we'll close the second public comment period. Let's circle back then. Uh, we did earlier, John, when we were waiting for you, we did some discussion. Uh, we talked a lot about the election and so on, but uh, we're gonna reopen now discussion and general information among the board on any topic uh, that you'd like to bring before the board. So the floor is open. I'll start just by saying that uh, last week I did a little Zoom meeting um, you know, I'm, I'm wrapping up here, but my, I, I, I've served on the WCET board and there's some, some, some things happening there that's run by Al and Al's getting ready to retire. Uh, his number two and the thought of somebody that might take over for him was Brady, who used to come and film our meetings. Brady is no longer with the station either. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the station is a, it's a, a conglomeration of our three municipalities, Georgetown, Hudsonville. Uh, the city of Hudsonville and city of Granville, as well as the districts, Jenison School District, Hudsonville, and Granville. Um, the Ken Crombie from Granville has kind of taken the, the, the lead with that organization, and he's put together with a group of students from Grand Valley uh, to try and put together some kind of contingency plan. A lot of other factors going on right now, including federal litigation in terms of funding. The station has seen a, a decrease in, in cable uh, subscribers, which lowers the amount of funding used pay for labor and so uh, there's some thoughts as to whether or not the, the station has any viability whether it would uh, merge with another local station be it uh, the Wyoming Kentwood or, or Grand Valley or, or what's going to happen to that so um, as you know somebody else now on the, on the new board will, will be taking over uh, our uh, our delegate for for that um, but there, there's some stuff going on now that that there, there's concern about the, the future of the station. 
What's your perspective, Jason, as you say, as you exit the board, what's your perspective? You know, it, it when I did the Zoom meeting with, with the, uh, the Grand Valley, it was a, 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 I think it was a master's student. Uh, and I said, you know, when I, 20 years, 25 years ago, uh, it, it had a great value. They would come and, and record our football games. Uh, I remember having, you know, nine VHS tapes that I sent to schools to, to go play football. Uh, that's, how, that's how we got that. Now, well, now everything is digital. Uh, the schools kind of all have their own stuff. We have our, our, our township, you know, in our boardroom there. We've got our own cameras, our own recording equipment. Um, everything is kind of automated. And I, I, I just, you can only access that if you have um, Charter Comcast or AT&T. I, I know that a lot of people in our community, I know, knowing myself, my family, my friends, everybody's kind of switching to a, a streaming service. I think that it's kind of a, a, a lost art. It's a dying, um, you know, it has a couple good functions yet, but I, you know, for the, for, for what goes into it, I don't know that, uh, you know, that that'll be for the next board to decide if, if that's something that we want to contribute to keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a savings on our phone bill too, or on the, isn't there a, be, a peg fee? Yeah. So if, if, for example, the station were to cease to exist or if Georgetown removed itself from that organization, what that would do is the, the members of our community that currently have Charter, Comcast, or AT&T, they pay a fee on that bill and that fee would go away. So it's the, the residents of our community that currently subscribe to those services uh, would see a savings on their bill. Mm -hmm. You know, public entities, be they schools or governmental entities, are, are, uh, are, are, they really have a tough time, I think, ever recognizing the obsolescence of things that have begun in the past. Uh, it almost seems that once something's formed, you almost can't take it away. But I think there are times and seasons and changes and all the rest of that. And you're, you're pointing that out uh, to us, Jason. And um, I think it'll be interesting to see over the course of the next year or two then um, whether or not there's a continued viability um, and as you point out Carol whether or not it's a time to reevaluate in, in the future board um, whether we want our township residents paying those peg fees or we want to save them that that cost uh, for a service that very very few of them are using um, all right well thank you for that report uh, Jason and thank you for your service on that committee uh, others of you uh, for discussion among the board Well, Jim, I'd, I'd like you to just mention how outstanding Jason has been on the Utilities Committee. Uh, very knowledgeable, does his homework, incredibly creative at, at solving problems, but also at, at helping our citizens. Many of them would um, make some mistakes with their utilities, and he would help them through the process in a very positive way and solve it for them. Uh, truly a leader. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you, Jason. You've just, just done an awesome job with us. And I know you're burning the candle at both ends with your business. I think you've got a number of them. But uh, your service to the community is, is certainly well appreciated. So we want, I want to thank you. I'm sure all of us do. Yeah. Amen to that, John. And I'll springboard off in that comment to say to you as a board, um, I'm just going to notify you, this will be our last meeting together as constituted here as this board. Um, we don't have any pressing issues uh, coming up in two weeks. It'll be immediately after the election. Um, as a number of you pointed out tonight, it's not as though we uh, should be continuing to make decisions that might affect or tie the hands of the next board. Uh, and I think out of deference to them, uh, we're not going to meet two weeks from tonight. And so I want to springboard off from John's comments to say, no matter how the election turns out, uh, this board as constituted will not be the same uh, next time. And so I want to say to every one of you as board members, whether you're going to continue to serve or whether, uh, whether you don't, um, we so appreciate the time, the hours, the attention, uh, the love of community, the care that you've rendered, the, the you know, the willingness to put aside uh, sometimes your own interests for the good of, of others generally in the community, uh, to take time out of your busy lives to 
be involved in a way that you feel is meaningful and contribute and, and give up your time to um, your residents, to your fellow neighbors and friends and family. And uh, as you well know, and we've talked about it from time to time, it, it doesn't come with a lot of pats on the back, and that's fine. I don't think any of us serves for the uh, you know, notoriety. Uh, if anything, it's sometimes notorious uh, rather than uh, bringing us notoriety. But nevertheless, it's, it goes with the territory. I don't think any of us complains about it or is shocked when uh, some might disagree. But all of you have uh, served with the right heart. Uh, in the right perspective. I'll say that, you know, I don't sense with any one of you that um, uh, that there's a, a base selfish motive, but, you know, we may have differing points of view in terms of how we think the community would be best served in, in a particular issue. Uh, but I don't think we disagree in the fact that we are here for the community. Uh, and I can say that to each one of you that I know you personally, I've served alongside you, and I've been privileged and honored to do so. And I don't see in any one of you um, the desire to, uh, to turn things in the direction that benefits you versus what you see as beneficial to the township. And so I'm grateful uh, to serve with the Board of Integrity. And so, John, I, I echo your sentiments and expand it uh, to the full board. And I appreciate the opportunity to, sh to share that with you. And on that note, is there anything else anyone wishes to share or say this evening? All right, hearing none. I'm gonna to look to you, Rich. This is one of your, your motions. Would you like to move to adjourn? I will make the motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. All right, and Carol, would you be the one to second? Carol, you froze. There you are. Yeah, mine froze. Uh, I think right. my battery is just about done. You second that motion to adjourn? Yes. All right, thank you so much. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you to you all. Have a great evening. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye.